sound speeds. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've heard me say things like, do not nitpick the wrong kind of noise. And I even made a video about it if you'd like to check it out. And when asked in live streams or in the comments in my videos, I've also said, I do not recommend buying an audio interface unless it has at least 70 dB of gain. The reason why is because if you have more gain than a typical audio interface that only has maybe 50 to 60 dB, you're going to have an EIN that gets below the theoretical minimum. And you might say that's impossible, Alan, but I'm going to explain why that works in this video. Now, I'm going to go into candid mode in order to do this, and I'm going to start by setting up for you and explaining to you the setup that I have going on. Now, I'm recording my audio for this episode on the D80 HD TX, which I also have a video about if you'd like to check it out, because I'm going to be recording our audio testing on the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6. And I'm recording right here on this Sony ZV-1, which is recording the screen of the, of the Mix Pre 6. And I have a GoPro up here, which is going to be recording the whole workspace that I have below. So let's waste no more time. And I'm going to hit record and bring up the Shure SM7B directly to my mouth. Now you may say, why aren't you wearing the uh, the pop filter on there? Because I don't like to. I prefer the way the SM7B sounds when you speak directly into it without a pop filter. You know I don't like these things. So anyway, if you look down there at my level, I, I am basically going uh, and peaking the meters just below negative 12 dB. And, and this is the inappropriate level, but if you notice, I'm also recording at 50 decibels of gain. Now, without me hitting stop, what I'm going to do is disconnect the audio from the Shure SM7B, and I'm going to plug in my Behringer CT100 uh, cable tester and noise generator, and I'm going to turn it to negative 50 dB right there, and I'm going to turn, turn it to test tone. Jeez, that is loud in my ears. So you can probably hear that. I should turn down the audio level. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm recording negative 50 dB at gain level 50 dB on the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 directly into an audio recording. And the reason why I'm doing that is because by having negative 50 dB plus 50 dB in an analog signal, when I bring it into my computer, you're going to see that it is not going to be a perfect match to the dbfs meters that i that we use digitally and so this is going to help me to calibrate it and right now we hit the one out one minute and 30 second mark i'm going to hit stop on my uh tone generator and now what i'm going to do is plug in a 150 ohm xlr dummy now i have a video about how to measure ein and i will uh link that directly right there if you'd like to check it out. But I'm not going to go into that in this video because I find it to be very important for you to watch that video simply because, not just because it gives me view time, but because it actually explains the process in better depth than I'm going to go into in this video. Now, I've been recording with this XLR dummy for approximately 30 seconds or so. And right at the two minutes and 30 seconds mark, I'm going to turn it to maximum gain. And the reason why is because if you were going to be measuring the EIN of your audio recordings, you got to do that at maximum gain. And I'll explain to you why as soon as I've set it all the way up to maximum. Here we go. Okay. So now I'm recording audio that is 100% thermal noise coming directly off of this XLR dummy directly into the Sound Devices Mix Pre-6. Now it's at maximum gain, negative 60, uh, at positive 76 decibels, because that's the maximum gain on a Mix Pre-6. Now, once I get a good appropriate amount of audio recording there, I'm going to import it into the computer and you're going to see exactly why. Now, you can see the file I have going here is, uh, it's called Tone EIN Live. And I'm going to hit stop on the audio recording and I'm going to go into into the uh, audio system here, and I'm going to import in this audio file and put it on the computer. So I've imported it in there. I'm going to hit exit. And now we are going to open up Isotope RX on my, on my system here. So Isotope RX is opened, and I'm gonna go over here and import in the audio file. So now this is the audio file we just got through recording. You can see the name matches here in the folder and everything has been very upfront to you. Now, if you notice right here, this is what I was talking into the, the 
Shure SM7B right here. And this is the tone generator that we used. Now I'm going to select an area of that tone generator and I'm going to hit uh, waveform stats. And you're going to see that negative 1547 dB is the RMS level. Now, in that spot right there, we know that I added the tone generator plus, which was at negative 50 dB, plus the gain that I added on the Mix Pre 6, which was 50 dB of gain, that should be zero dB. So what I'm going to do is hit gain over here and I'm going to add that amount back. So I'm going to add 15.47 dB. Now I'm going to select the entire file here and hit render. And so now this is going to look incredibly loud and it is, but it does also equal right at zero dB. Now we don't need to necessarily worry about any of these numbers or anything else because we don't care anything about that audio level. What we do care about is these quieter levels right over here. Now I'm going to look at those quieter levels by bringing up the sensitivity so that we can see exactly what it is. Now, if you recall, this is when I just disconnected it and plugged in the XLR dummy. So this silence right here is, is that, which was only at negative, which is only adding 50 decibels of gain. But right over here, which is a little bit louder, you see when I went to maximum gain, 76 decibels. So what I'm gonna do is choose an area just at random here. And we're now looking at about negative 53.63. And it's going to adjust a little bit as I slide left and right. But if you notice right here, negative 53.59, is the uh, is the gain level that is right there at the RMS level. So what I'm going to do is open up calculator and I'm going to put in this level negative 53.59. I'm going to subtract 76 decibels of gain and we have a EIN of negative 129.59. Now this is not with an A weighting curve applied. It's actually been measured before and it's it's right around uh, like negative 130. And if you scroll around here, you'll see this probably hit around negative 54, which is basically where it would be um, if it's going to go above 130. So now that I've set this up for you, I'm going to make good on the claim that I stated at the very beginning of this video. Now I'm still here in Isotope RX and you can see waveform stats here are still zero dB. And that's the negative 50 dB tone generator, which I boosted by 50 decibels of gain in the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6. And so by the time I brought it in here and calibrated it, it's now showing zero dB, which means over here, this is the EIN, but that was at plus 76 decibels of gain. So if I want to simplify this whole process, what I can do is subtract 76 decibels of gain from everything so that I see what everything looks like in real time at those low levels but we can't really see anything unless I bring up the sensitivity of the threshold here. So now when I go over here, you can see that this is what the EIN actually is, negative 29.59, negative. And this is of course not A weighted, but check this out. What I said at the very beginning of this video was you can get below the theoretical minimum on your EIN. And one of the reasons why I do not recommend getting interfaces that have about 50 to 60 decibels is because if you have a maximum level of gain set at that, which is let's say 60 decibels of gain. And your EIN is let's say negative 130. And then you, you, you're basically using a microphone that gives full throttle on the gain. Then you're very close to that EIN level, aren't you? But if you use something that has a lot more gain, like the Sound Devices Mix Pre-6 that has 76 decibels, you're going to have to lower the noise or lower the gain rather, which is going to drop that EIN level just like it will your level. So right now we're looking at the theoretical, uh, the, the, the EIN level of the Sound Devices Mix Pre-6 right here. But watch what happens when I drop the level down to what was an appropriate level for me when I was speaking into the Sound Devices Mix Pre-6 before with the Shure SM7B. Doom. Negative 55.78. Now, granted, I was speaking pretty loud, trying to make a point. But if you were to set the level even 10 dB hotter, we're still looking at negative 45, which is below the theoretical minimum of EIN. I can zap all around through here, and that level is a lot lower than the minimum EIN level. So that is what I meant when I said that it is very possible for you to get below the theoretical minimum of EIN. 
This is the reason why I don't recommend buying an audio interface unless it has a lot of gain built into it. Because if the EIN level is measured at a maximum gain level, which is well above the amount of gain that you're ever going to use in your audio recordings, then by the time you bring it way down here, your noise is going to drop down to well below the theoretical minimum. Which is the reason why when people do EIN testing online and they test one interface that has plus 72 decibels of gain and another one has plus 50 and another one has plus 55 and another one has plus 60. None of those levels work for me when you compare EIN to EIN because you're not comparing level to level where you would use it in the real world. So consider this next time you go to buy yourself something like an audio interface because you want to make sure you get yourself the lowest theoretical EIN, right? And therefore, you want to get yourself clean preamps and yourself an interface that has quite a bit of gain built into it. So thank you for tuning in this episode of Soundspeeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more deep dives, explanations, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below, or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.